Hello, this is Stevie Solace and welcome to Arbor Live. You could say that the guitar hero was born in the late 1960s with the emergence of guys like Eric Clapton, Jeff Beck, Jimmy Page, and of course the mighty Jimi Hendrix. Then again in 1977 we had Eddie Van Halen. He came along and kind of took things to a whole nother level. But it wasn't until the mid 80s that we would see a new type of guitar hero. Unlike the guitar heroes before him, this guitar hero wouldn't have any sexy front man lead singer to balance things off of. Matter of fact, this guitar hero wouldn't even have a singer. His name's Joe Satriani, and tonight he's on Arbor Live. Our next artist grew up in the countryside of Ontario, Canada, where she dreamed of singing like her heroes, Loretta Lynn and Tammy Wynette. Her love of country music would bring her to the streets of Nashville, Tennessee, where her dreams now are coming true. She is Crystal Shawanda. We also have the true rock and roll Indian outlaw, Wayne Lavallee. So once again, sit back and buckle up, and let's do this thing called Arbor Live. <laughs>
say, Wayne, that you are a cowboy Indian? I would say I'm a rock and roll cowboy Indian. Rock, rock and roll cowboy. Yeah. It's kind of odd. I never really thought about this, yeah. right? This is kind of uh, oxymoronic, I would, I would say, but, you know, that's Hollywood's fault. You get some of those Indian cowboy mixtures could be a, a deadly thing, and, and for rock and roll, that's nothing better, right? Well, for sure. I, I got this song called The Tonto Project that I kind of dedicate to Tonto, the character, because I think that, uh, you know, uh, the Lone Ranger kind of uh, overshadowed and stole Tonto's thunder, so I'm just yeah. going to give it back give it back to Tonto and... Give a love to give, Tonto? Yes, right. You've been rocking around Canada. You have uh, your... It's, it's a kind of a, a, a hard to describe style, I think. It's like... You're like, a, you're like an Indian outlaw that has a blend of country, but it's definitely rock, almost like the, the, the outlaws like Waylon Jennings, let's say, but, but you're rock harder. So it's, a, it's an odd blend of, of, it's not folk. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, I find your music really interesting. Yeah, well, I, I grew up with classical, classic rock and a lot of country influence too, like Waylon Jennings and even, uh, you know, uh, the guys like uh, George Jones and uh, Conway Twitty, that stuff. I just love the storytelling and that element. And But I'm also a, a classic rock guy, right? So I'm kind of trying to mix that, fuse that together. And add, you also add the, the native influence, right? That aesthetic, that kind of chant. Because it's, it's powerful, man. And it grabs people's attentions, right? When you start chanting on stage, people are like, oh, what the, what, what's that sound, man? It just, it gives me chills on my back. So it's there's definitely an, a, an aesthetic. There's an average original fusion rock and roll Indian cowboy and that's that's why I call it rock and roll Indian cowboy music. Is that what you call it? Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah, I totally. That's 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 my whole marketing campaign. <laughs> hey, I, I was on point. I didn't even know. I should have yeah. read the bio. Yeah, yeah, no, that's <laughs> that's when people ask me I say it's it's rock and roll Indian cowboy. That's that's, that's how you describe the music and that's definitely the sound. <laughs>
Is it true you wanted to be prom queen? <laughs> no, I didn't. You know, actually in high school, I, um, my number of absences was actually higher than my grade average. That was we can't talk about that. <laughs> no, no, no. That's all wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. Okay, but what it, about... But it's true, though. Hold on, this dude. I gotta see a man about a horse. What are you, what are you doing, dude? Ew. I gotta f***ing pee, dude. Oh, s***. It's okay. kind of gross. I'm sorry. Let's move on. Let's move on. So, so perhaps you, you, you want to go talk about smell fishing. Oh, Jesus Christ! Um, it's kind of yeah. loud. So, with Joe Satriani in his dressing room, a lovely dressing room, I might add, what's this tour? The Taurus Satchafunculus and the Mysterian Rockadelic? Rockadelic, yeah. That's, that's uh, Galen Henson's fault. He, I don't know. You know, he's, he's very psychedelic. He does a lot of psychedelic substances, you know, 24 hours a day, because he's a tour manager, and we need the tour manager to be in an altered state in order to conduct business with the rest of the world. You know, it's a play on Professor Satchafunculus and the Mysterium of Rock, which is the title of the most recent record. I like the Satchafunculus. It's like you're the rock version of Parliament Funkadelic. Yeah, yeah, I like that. You know what I mean? You're going to get outside. They got outside. They broke some boundaries. You break a lot of boundaries. I try. I think your tour manager is onto something. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> so how long have you been out on this one? We started April 30th, actually. And uh, we started in Europe. We spent two months there. And then we went down under. We did Australia and New Zealand. That's them calling right now. I heard that noise. <laughs> New Zealand calling. Uh, we worked our way up all the way through South America, uh, Mexico City. We took a, about a week and a half off, and then we started the North American tour. So over 100 shows since then. How many months has it been? Six, nine months, something like that. I'm, and uh, I can't count. Okay, I want to get back to other people you played with. Okay, so wait, you played in Deep Purple, then who else? So there's Greg, the Greg Kin band, right? Greg Kin. Um, did, did work with Alice Cooper. I mean, there's things that I've done where I've just spent a week with someone, done some tracks on their records, and then uh, people I've spent a lot of time with. And if we go back to 88, you know, just as surfing was breaking, of course, I signed on to play with Mick Jagger. Yeah. And so that was a, a year of work. But in between the tours, um, the Down Under tour and the Japanese tour, um, there was a lot of solo work to finally capitalize on the, the growing popularity of surfing. So that was a crazy year of, of playing, absolutely intense. But working with Mick, I mean, that was, that was amazing. Great band, you know, I think how many of nine or 11 of us in the band, I mean, it was a huge show. And uh, yeah, to go from the guy who used to play in Grey Kin and who had a couple of weird solo albums out to be in in Rolling Stone as the guy, and you know Mick Jagger's lead guitar player. That was, that was a, a wonderful trauma to, oh yeah, to take on. <laughs>
whispered in his ear You can let go now, daddy You can let go Oh, I think I'm ready To do this on my own It's still a little bit scary But I want you to know I'll be okay now, daddy You can let go Recently I was hanging out with Crystal Shawanda and I got a chance to ask her a few questions. The first thing I asked her was, would it be fair to say that she is an old soul trapped in a young body? <laughs> yeah, I'm an old soul. Uh, I definitely am. I've always heard that ever since I was a little kid. And for me, um, I always found common ground with people who are older than me. It was like my, my favorite thing to do on the weekends was to sit in the basement at my house and jam out with other musicians who are twice my age and, you know, prefer over going to like a birthday party or a slumber party. <laughs> to know how a young girl who grew up in the cold north of Ontario, Canada would go about discovering the warm, warm sounds of a legend like Loretta Lynn. I'm my mama. <laughs> I was very lucky that the family I grew up in was um, surrounded by country music. It was, it was a way of life. Like I could, even as a kid, I could see them finding, well, particularly like my mom, she would find a comfort in Loretta Lynn's music like even almost like a friendship, like somebody finally understood her and um, I always wanted to be that for somebody else. To me, the old school sound of country is missing in today's country music, replaced with the sort of new 80s style heavy metal with a fiddle sound that Nashville does. I wanted to know if Crystal missed the simplicity of a Patsy Cline melody in a sad tale. Um, you know what, I think it's still there. The essence is still there. And it's, you know, it's definitely changed, but um, that's what life's about. It's about evolving and changing and growing and, and exploring and figuring out who we are today as a, you know, as a genre. And, but I think the essence is still there, I think, you know. When you hear like um, Josh Turner and Trisha Yearwood sing a duet together, you can definitely hear uh, glimpses of their heroes. And you know, so the legends in a way, they're always there. And just like when I sing, I, I always say that all my heroes have been my teachers and I've let them teach me everything I know. So I think all of the, they all come through in a song I sing or the way I sing it. And uh, they live through in that way. Sunsetting on the night A big country Land of fun And hey, hey And hey, hey And hey, hey And hey, hey 
child hey 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 Loud. <laughs> I can't believe them. Ow! For f sake, Eric! Come on, be quiet. I'm trying to do an interview here. Hey, f you! I got an inverted bladder. I was born with my bladder upside down. I can't help it. <sighs> okay. Sorry about that. Now let's move on. You want, <laughs> okay. You, you wanted to be. Okay, I'm sorry. So when we do this interview, I think that we maybe we should cover, okay, you didn't want to be prom queen, you weren't the prom queen, you don't, I don't want to talk about you snake hunting. I, I don't think that's really sexy. You're, you're what about too, frogs? I used to catch frogs. What would you do with the frogs? I would carry them around, put them in my pocket. <laughs> So now, okay, so there's Jagger, Greg Kinn, Deep Purple, Alice Cooper. Ooh, I, I'm forgetting everybody now. I'm drawing a blank. I know, too. I know there's more in there, though. Stevie Salas. Did you ever record with me? No. No, we toured together, no. though. No, I didn't pass the audition. <laughs> I was too shy. <laughs> <laughs> Our tour was a good tour. We had lots of fun. I was scared to death, though, every night opening for you, um, because... I don't know if anyone out there knows this, but in the old days when you would open up for Joe Satriani, 
uh, most of the bands were lasting about a week, and then they'd start to hear the, you'd, they'd open up, and they'd go, Dun, and you'd hear, Joe, 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 right? It was like just 1,000, 5,000 people, Joe, and that's all you'd hear about. And then they'd start throwing stuff. So I was petrified. So every night I'd go off that stage, I'd, I was like a crazy person thinking at any moment I'm gonna die. <laughs> After working with you, it, that's what made me a popular guitar player. I don't think I was a, known as a guitar player up to that point, I was a songwriter guy who played guitar and sang or whatever. But that got me in the Reader's Poll that year in Guitar World. Oh, cool. You know, and because of the exposure to all your fans, and it sort of made people, you know, think of me as a guitarist because of my association with you. So mm. for me, it was a good thing. What is a Which, pod? Well, I just got to play it for you. Yeah, yeah, so I don't overwhelm your microphone. Here's your guitar sound. Yes. Yes. So it's like those old, uh, what do they used to call them? The MXR micro synthesizer yeah, kind of? Yeah, very much like that. It tracks really good though, yeah? We, uh, this is the saturator. Now this replaced my orange box. Saturator! I didn't even notice that! <laughs> is that the best name ever? What's wrong with me? <laughs> so, uh, and that's a prototype as you can see, it's number four. Wow! Um, but you can get, see, new ones look like this. Your commercial. Hi, I'm Joe Satriani. You need one of these, a Vox Saturator. I want to keep playing and I want to keep making new pedals and new amps and new guitars. I love that. I'm fascinated by design. So, um, yeah, all those things together, I mean, and plus, you know, once you play in front of an audience, you never want to stop. I mean, that's the greatest feeling ever is to, is to connect with an audience and put on a great show. So. I think I'm, I'm hooked for life on that one. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well done, well done. Well, obviously it's working for you where it hasn't worked for anybody else. So you are definitely a, a one of a kind in that department, so. All right, that's hot. Joe Satriani. That's me. <laughs> See you later. Tonto's thunder And now the truth Untold 
told Now here's the true tale Of how that ranger would have sailed The Tonto and the Apache It's just a Hollywood definitely a vibration there that has something going on that I think probably indigenous people from China, Japan, anywhere else, it's it's the same sort of feeling. Yeah, that's totally what it is, right? Because I think indigenous people around the world, like, they, they get it as well, right? Because we're all, we all come from universal teachings and we all have, uh, we come from teachings from the earth and we have that sound, that, that chant, you know? So they get it. And, you know, even non-native people, when they do hear it, they're just, you know, like I was saying, it's like, Wow, that's something new. But to us, it's just, you know, what we do on the power circuit. It's what, you know, what we do, you know, it's part of our lifestyle. Once people in Europe and around the world realize that you're a native Aboriginal person, I find that they seem to have a mad, mad love for our culture. Much, much more than a lot of our own people have uh, across Europe and Japan. And and uh, I think that it's great if, if all native people could travel those parts of the world and see how much people admire us and, and, and love our heritage and our culture. So you going over there, um, I mean, it's a great thing. You're gonna be spreading the word, but you're gonna also see that they're up on it. I mean, they, they, they're all about it. Yeah, totally, you know. I. I've heard amazing things about the European market in France, especially about Native Americans, how they really embrace the culture. And I mean, they're serious about it too, you know, they're not, I mean, they, they actually have their own powwows in Germany, right? So I'm gonna go over there and I'm not gonna play the Hollywood Indian, I'm just gonna be myself and just, you know, play, play my Indian rock and roll cowboy music. You know, it's always best to be yourself, absolutely. You're gonna be representing, so I hope you can send back some postcards and, and uh, keep us at Arbor Live all up to date on your global madness, all right? Yeah, cool, man. I, I can't wait to get out there. Thanks, Steve, for the interview and for the show and uh, rock and roll, right on. Wayne Lavallee or Wayne Lavallee. Okay. He, he pees a lot. He comes from a long line of peers. His dad was a big peer, too. Dude, that's really freaking gross. Ah, Jesus Christ! Oh, hold on, hang on! For f sake, Eric, pinch it off, will ya? Hey, f off! All right. Sorry about that. Oh, I want I feel like a new man. Crystal, it's been a pleasure. Uh, did you wash your hands? I can't remember. Ew, gross. I mean, um, I'm, I'm good. Nice See, meeting you. Get you later, out of here. Go. Jesus, Eric. <laughs> smelt fishing. I, I'm thinking smelt fishing is not... Sexy. I think Crystal Shawanda is a superstar. Glitter. Actually, actually, can you can you hold that thought? I listening to all the water running kind of made me have to go pee pee. Sorry. Just just one second. I'm sorry. No problem. Sorry. No problem. No problem. <laughs> sorry. Oh, oh. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Jimmy, 
makes an unusual amount of noise, doesn't she? Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. Now. One, two, I was burning your photograph But that's a test to count of things you do And you're living through the aftermath of the love gone bad I change a lot on the ride Better way to sold on a way In a desperate search Find the courage myself of the love we share Just when I get there Here you come like a train out of nowhere phenomenal artists is going to you know break stereotypes she's going to be loved by many people she already is and I can't wait to hear more from her and when she finally reaches that big world stage man she's gonna have the crowds just like uh, a few other people out there and she deserves it still to this day some of my favorite duets are the duets by Conway Twitty and Loretta Lynn Knowing Crystal's love of Loretta Lynn, I asked her if she had a chance to do a remake of the duet, Hello Country Bumpkin, who would she want to sing it with? Oh my goodness, um, I'd have to say Dwight Yoakam. Oh, of course. Because I just love Dwight. He's the greatest. <laughs> I would look for any excuse to sing a duet with him. He's the greatest, absolutely. But then, I don't know, if I did a duet with him, I'd probably like choke and like get all scared and intimidated. It's like, you know, you put people right up there and it's like, you know, it's daunting to be around people you look up to. Recently, Krista had her own CMT television special. I asked her if it was straight reality or if she was indeed acting. 
Um, you know, I had my record deal for about a year and a half when I was actually approached by CMT Canada and Henry Les Productions. And they talked to me about doing this um, TV show and they said it's just a documentary style series and it's just about your, um, you know, the whole process of trying to get an album out and um, picking the right songs and just the whole business side of it and the good and the bad and the ugly and everything in between. And um, I jumped at it because I saw it as a way for people to see what it's really like and that it's not just, um, you know, I don't just sing. There's this whole other side, this whole other business. And it's, uh, I think it's good for a young person who's aspiring to do something to see it being challenging for me, then they understand that um, everything's challenging. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. I always tell people who want to be in the music business, you have music, then you have the music business. They're very separate. One is music, which is something you create that's from your heart. The music business could be the tabletop business or at the couch business. It's about marketing and selling something. And I wanted to know if Crystal had a hard time figuring out how to merge the two. You know, it's something you have to work at every day to stay just as passionate and to remember what it's about. And for me, it's the stage. Every time I hit the stage, it's like, oh yeah, there I am. And this is what it's all about right here. And you know, people that I meet, stories that people share with me and how my music has affected them or inspired them. It feels good to be on the other side because, you know, I used to find comfort in my hero's music and, um, you know, find a friendship in it. So it's good to be returning that now. There's 11 things I love about Crystal Shawanda. One is her voice. And the other 10 are her green toenails. Can you get those? <laughs> <laughs> my light, green toes. Light those, light those up, baby. <laughs> Don't look at my toes. Don't look at my toes. <laughs> okay, I have here. matching nail polish. Look, cut, cut, yeah. cut. <laughs> <laughs>